morning. How's our family doing today? Good. Good. I hope all of you listening online are doing good wherever you're at in the world. Today is 9-11, and I don't know, I remember very clearly where I was that day when uh, in my generation, uh, there's older people here that remember wars and things, and my generation was probably uh, the sense of, hold on just a minute, we're, we're, not, we're not safe, right? We are, uh, we are vulnerable to outside attacks, and uh, you know, it's a day that uh, probably made me more thankful for freedom and for our military people who protect us, and uh, I don't want to ever lose respect for that, and uh, yeah, yeah. Not, not only that, all of our first responders, man, that put their life on the line, uh, that, and, and they sign up for it, so that's a big deal to me. It's a big deal to me. I, I don't want to do that. So, uh, man, if you're in that, any of that, man, we salute you today. Uh, James 3, in verse 1, we got a lot to talk about. It's going to carry over in the next week. James, James is about to roll up his sleeve. He's about to smash us in the mouth. Literally. Literally. And uh, this is a hard one for me. I'm not going to lie. Here we go. James 3, 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers. For you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. I don't like that. For we all stumble in many ways. Can I get an amen? amen. Good. It's your first time here and you say, man, I'm imperfect. Well, even James, who wrote in the Bible, made it clear on something that's not spoken a lot in many churches because, you know, truth isn't welcome. We all stumble in many ways. Amen. Even this guy right here. Okay, now you can relax. <laughs> and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he's a perfect man. I don't know many of them. And it's also, it, it, he's, we're going to talk a little more, we're going to touch on this today and we're going to talk more about it. If anyone doesn't stumble in what he says, he's a perfect man and able to bridle his whole body, control, his, control all of his actions. If we put bits in the mouths of horses so they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at ships also, though, though they are so large and driven by strong winds, they're guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. Verse 6. And the tongue is a fire. A world of unrighteousness, the tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. Let's talk. We're learning that the letter of James is intended to help us decipher between a profession of faith and a possession of faith. He showed us it's one thing to profess faith. But he's saying if your faith is alive versus dead, right? It will show itself in our actions. True alive faith isn't just words. But outward actions that reflect what is on the inside of us. We remember at the end of chapter 1. James gives us a description of what it looks like when we have true faith, right? True faith on the inside of us. Three areas that it will show up in our works. And James 1.26 says, If anyone thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, 
He deceives his heart, and this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, is visit orphans, wit, uh, widows, and their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. In other words, look, we, it's all back to this. It's, it's all back to this. I, I, it, when someone comes to you, and this is talking about in the church, not even talking about reaching outside of the church, widows and orphans come to you, and, and they were in need in the church because that was a huge deal in, in this culture. Uh, don't say, I'm going to pray for you. you that's, that's not, he's saying you've got to put action to this. They're, they're hungry. They need clothes. You do it. Okay? That's one way. Our words, how we treat the poor, and also how we react to the world system. When the Bible talks about worldliness or the world, it's not talking about going to Colorado on vacation and seeing the world. It's talking about a system of worldliness, a, mind, a mindset of godlessness. Are you with me? We are in the world, not of this world. What, what does that mean? We are in the world, but we are not of that mindset. Okay, that's what this means. Chapter 2 that we just came through is mainly about how we treat the less fortunate uh, than us. Chapter 3 is mainly about the tongue, which we're going to deal with. Chapter 4 and 5 is mainly about how we live as a Christian in our life in this everyday world system. He's going to break it down, and he's going to do this. We'll get to that later. So James starts off today in verse 3 by telling us about the seriousness of our words. Now, uh, I don't know of anyone qualified to preach this message. The older I get, the harder it gets. I, I would think by now, I would be good at this. I'm worse. I have less tolerance with stupidity. My wife uses the word harsh. George, you're just so harsh. Harsh. I, I don't know what it is. I'm thinking, I have to, I have to preach this? So I'm going to be very honest to you because I'm going to show you why. Okay? I, I, I used to would take stuff when people say it and God bless you. Now I don't. Now we're going to talk about it. Right? So maybe this will help me. It's been, this has been a struggle. Do we feel better? I feel better. He tells us if, if, if we can find a way to master our tongue, we can master our whole life. Now he's not saying if you master your tongue, the, the, the repercussion of that is your whole life is mastered. He's saying it's so difficult to master your tongue that if you can pull that off, there's not an addiction, there's not an attitude, there's nothing that you can't pull off if you can whip that one. He's not saying that your whole life is mastered as a byproduct of, I got my tongue right. No, he's saying this is so difficult, right? It's like jumping out of a plane. Who would want to do that? Who wants to do it? My wife does. She wants to jump out of a plane. Y'all really do? Okay, maybe y'all can get together and do it, and I'll video from the ground. <laughs> if, you, if you hear George got out of a plane, somebody push me. It, it would be like jumping out, no problem, then, then me telling her, hey, jump off this. It's like, oh, no, I'm scared. Well, you just jumped out of a plane. So James is saying, look, if you can get, huh? If you can master this and you can get this perfect, then the rest of it's nothing. Nothing. They're like, man, I need encouragement today. I'm giving it to you. All right, verse 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers. For you know who we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. Who is we? Who is we? Uh, is it a pastor? Y yes. Or, or are you involved? I believe it goes beyond a pastor. We will be judged more strictly. Why is that? I'm, I'm going to tell you. Glad you asked. What will be judged and who will judge us? 
No, number, word, no, number one, our words will be judged. Uh, what does that mean? Am I, I, and I use this bad analogy, and I've had people leave the church over it, but it's just a good one. Am I smoking what I'm selling to you? You see why people left? Like, oh, <laughs> that was not, okay. Am I eating what I'm, right, my own cooking? If somebody's cooking something, they don't eat it. <laughs> nah, I'm good. Fasting. <laughs> am, am I living what I'm prescribing? If, if, because if I am telling others, right, what to do or not to do something, I will be held more strictly the more a person claims to know, uh, to know, the more accountable they are held for what they, that with that knowledge. I'm going to prove this to you. So the more knowledge I have, the more accountable I am. I'm going to show you a great example. A teacher in the church setting, and I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm a pastor. I'm a teacher. I, I don't even know a preacher. Somebody said, what's the difference? I think you talk louder. <laughs> I think. I mean, the, the stuff should be the same, but I, I would go, yeah, the, the tongue is a fire. That's preaching, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I actually used to do that. That was, anyway. Another life, didn't know better. Anyway. A teacher in the church setting is meant to help, look, take the word of God, okay, and make it clear to other people. Think about this. You ever been somewhere and you heard something you like? It sounded good, it felt good, but you had no idea what to do with it. Right? A teacher is supposed to have the ability to take the word and make it easier to understand and to follow. My job is not to make the deep deeper. Somebody said, This is worse to your deep. Look, I can get so deep, I don't even understand what I'm saying. My job is not to make it deep. My job is to take the deep and teach it in a way that it can be understood. Okay? So why does James even have to deal with this? Why is, is, is James just, is he like, is he smoking something? Is he just pulling stuff out of a hat going, you know, I think I'll talk about this, I'll think about this. No, 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 no. He's writing to these churches because uh, there's an issue. He's writing to these churches. There's an issue. Apparently, apparently they, they, were, they had some guys popping up, and I've seen this. I've seen this, and the fruit don't follow the fruit. Right? The fruit don't follow the fruit cake. <laughs> apparently, there were self-titled teachers popping up in the church. Okay? Some thought they were truly wise when they were still immature in their faith and their knowledge. They need to be taught, okay? Uh, also, some just wanted the respect given to teachers. But they did not have the spiritual gift of teaching or a lifestyle that lined up with what they were teaching, okay? And, and, and probably in the setting and the time, most likely what they were teaching was additions to Jesus. Okay, it, it was... It was what they wanted. And we have this in the church all the time. And if you don't know who you are and you don't know what your mission is, you don't know, if you don't know what God's called you to do, you'll say yes to everything. Because everybody's got a good idea. Hello. And they want you to preach it. Right? But I'm not going to preach it because I'm going to be held really strict to what I say. So I'm going to line it up against the Word of God and I'm going to line it up against the mission and the vision of what he gave us. If it don't fit there, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Okay, and I know you don't like that because you got some really good stuff from your other church. And I come from another church and there was really good stuff. But when we, when we come here, right, God's given me a vision and a mission that one day I'll die or you'll get rid of me or my wife will kill me or something. <laughs> and God will send you somebody else and it might be different. These people were wanting to, uh, 
take on this role, but they were not ready for it. Immaturity, uh, they, they couldn't live what they were teaching, and most likely, most likely, it was additions to Jesus Christ alone, and, uh, you know, he was not enough for your salvation. So James' warning, be real careful. Be real careful what you're cooking for others because God will expect you to eat the same thing. Now, it says we will be judged. By who? By who? God and people. Okay? And let's start with people, since that's who we can really relate to. I, I can't teach one thing, then live another, because people who hear what I have taught will hold me accountable to my own teaching. That's why I'm so open and honest with you. That's why I tell you how I really feel. That's why I don't get up here and say, I've got this tongue mastered, therefore my whole body is in check. I get up here and I'll be honest with you. I, I, I struggle with this right here. I, I have a problem with this, and it's getting worse. So something, God, help me. That's why I tell you the truth. So you're going to see me make mistakes. You might be the one that pulls out in front of me and I lay on my arm in the name of Jesus and try to bless you on that day. <laughs> right? You go, that's Pastor George. I'm not telling you not to do that. I'm telling you I have faults and I probably will. So therefore you can't go, uh-huh, he said not to do that. I'm telling you try not to. So when you say, you honked at me, I said, you know, I tried not to. <laughs> I can have an idea all, long, all day long, and it won't affect anyone. It's just an idea that's in my head. But when I verbalize it as truth, hear me, I'm now going to have to live up to the standard that I have taught, that I have said this is God's standard. We don't have standards at this church. We have God's standards. We don't have man's standards. We don't get together and go, what do you think? No, I don't, no, please don't do that. We try to take the word of God as the standard. If God says no, it's no. If he says yes, it's yes. That's, that's just, is that, that pretty easy? Okay, I'm not going to make nothing up here, all right? When I verbalize this is truth, I'm now going to have to live up to the standard that I have taught because people will watch me closely. I always feel like somebody's watching me. I always, come on. Who, who doesn't know that song? Who does know that song? Okay, we know what our group here is today. <laughs> Children of the 80s. They're going to watch me closely to see if my message lines up with my works. Next, God will judge me more strictly. Well, let's look at the definition of judge, and we're going to talk about this more down the road. We're going to dive a little deeper into this. Uh, Romans 8, 1, Paul makes something clear, okay? There's therefore now, thank God, we have, somebody say now. now. We're, we're now, we're living in now. Yesterday's gone, tomorrow, we're now. There's therefore now, but he, he's talking about a specific incident. Yeah. There's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus now. Yeah. Thank God. To condemn is to be found guilty by judgment. I'll dig deeper in this later. James nor Paul is talking about sins being brought up and, and, and judged as far as with a penalty. Because Jesus was judged for our sins. Once and for all. Get this. Jesus paid for our sins. 
and posted bail, if you please. Once and for all. That's why there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. James is talking to Christians. Okay? He's talking to Christians here. So what kind of judgment is he talking about? We already talked about this, but I'm going to read it. I'll read it, and I've had people call me out on this. And, and, I, and this is where my words get crazy, and I'm like, do you not listen? What are you doing on Sundays? I've talked about it so many times. And I, somebody just questioned me on this. I'm like, do you come to church? I don't know. Are, are you, like, playing mahjong during service? See, I, I, I got, hmm. You know, I should be going, oh, bless you. Let's go to the scripture. But I don't. Anyway. Let's, let's start out in verse 11, 1 Corinthians 3, 11. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The first thing you put down on a house is the foundation. It's the first thing. Somebody say the first thing. The first thing that happens in my life and my relationship with Jesus is Jesus. All right? The forgiveness of my sins, my faith in him. That is paramount, baseline, done. Verse 12. Now, if anyone builds on that foundation, okay, what am I going to do after I'm saved? Are you tracking with me? What am I doing? Now, now, see, now he's going to talk about what am I doing with my faith in Christ? What happens? He's going to give us a couple examples here. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation, what's the foundation? Oh, you're listening. Good. I hope she is. If anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, stop right there. How many of you know? How many of you know those things ask something of you? How many of you know those things are rare? Hello. Now maybe y'all got more money than me. <laughs> then he doesn't stop there. Wood, hay or straw. How I many you know that just, you can walk out right there and get that. C come on. Right. You can go to your neighbor's yard, your yard. You can come to my house because I got goats and they don't eat it. <laughs> I bought goats for the simple reason of they will, I want. I don't like to mow. I don't like, I hate to mow. I don't like putting Christmas lights up because you got to take them down in a month. I don't like to mow because you got to do it again. I don't like that. It's not therapy for me. It's not, it's not therapy at all. It is excruciating. My wife loves it. I want to mow. <laughs> I'll fill her up. <laughs> right? When my goats won't eat it, they eat bark. But they will not eat hay off the ground. I don't get it. Anyway, how many of you know that stuff's easy to find? Right? No sacrifice involved. No, no nothing involved. This is not talking about your salvation. The foundation is already laid. Come on with me, people. Each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. How many of you know that the precious stones, fire will not, it will not be. So what he's talking about, it's going to be put to the test and evaluated. Our works, Okay. He's not talking about our salvation. He's not talking about our faith. That foundation has been laid. It's what we do after that. Okay, hang on with me. I get questioned about this all the time. And, yeah. The fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation, what's the foundation? Our, our salvation. If anyone... It's built on the foundation. Anything uh, survives, he will receive a reward. In other words, did what I do here on earth after my faith, subsequent to it, did it have eternal value? He 
people say, I like that tongue stuff better. Let's go back to that. We'll get there. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. What does burned up mean? It's just, it was temporary, no eternal value for the now, right? It's the three little pigs. I'm sorry, that just came to me. That's an ugly squirrel. We'll talk about it. One built with straw, one built with, built with sticks, one built with brick. How many of you know which one survived? Come on with me, somebody. It, it, like, if anyone's work is burned up through, through the evaluation, through, through God's, hey, look. Oh, don't get ahead of yourself, Joel. He's going to suffer loss. He's going to suffer loss. Though he himself will be it's not up there. Saved. Not the great white throne of judgment. This is the judgment seat of Christ. This is more of a reward ceremony than a depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. The judgment seat of Christ is for people who are saved, and we get before God, and he hands out rewards. You didn't know that, did you? Did you know there were two judgments? That's a whole other thing. Though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire, purifying fire, he will be saved. But he'll lose a reward, and uh, I don't know what that is. Now, I'm not saved on the basis of my works. Because I don't, yeah. again, it, and here, here it is. This is simple. In order for me to be saved on the basis of my works, I, I, think, I think the standard is perfection. Really, if, if, works, if, if you're saved by your works, you'd have to be spotless, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> he let us know we're all stumble. So I think if you're going to judge, God would judge us salvation-wise on works. It would have to be perfect because that's what God required. That's why Jesus went. So he's not judging our salvation on works. He's judging a reward. Did, what, what did we do after the foundation? What did we do? What were our works? Were there eternal value? Or do we just, for the now? Let me put it this way. You'll get this, because I, I get this. My decisions, my actions, is it based on my flesh and what George wants for, for now? I don't know about you, but uh, I, I, I don't know if the Holy Spirit convicted me or I convicted me, but I said, you know what, Lord? I haven't even thought about your coming all week. I haven't said, hey, are you coming today? You know what I've thought about? No. 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 no there's nothing wrong with dreaming. Right? I'm not against it. God's not against that. Please. I want to better myself. God's not against that. But my actions, did I do anything? Did George God do anything? And again, you're going, yeah, you're preaching. That's words. That's words. And God's going to go, hey, boy, come here. You remember what you said? You didn't do it. You're going to be saved, George, because I'm your foundation. The things you built on it, man, you had a lot. You had a lot of straw in there. And I'm not, I'm not talking about straw that was already bailed up. I'm talking about straw that come out of the, the goat's pen that had stuff on it. It was good for growing other things. It just didn't grow you. Let's, let's... I, so does that make sense to you? I'm not saved on the basis of my works. But my faith, true faith, living faith, should prompt something in me, right? Because I love him, and if I love somebody, I'm not trying to see. 
what I can get away with. I'm trying to please that person. Do I always succeed? No, me and my wife have intense fellowship all the time. I love her to death. I want to be pleasing to her, right? I helped her clean house yesterday. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the wives don't lose your husband. That's rare, but I did. I did it because I love her, not because I like to clean house. There are things that God asked me to do that I don't like that I have to do because I love, right? Do good to those who persecute you. Mm. Mm. Can I ask somebody else to do it? The man's works that did not stand up to the fire, the trial, the judgment, he himself will be saved. You get heaven, but this is reward. Uh, there's speculations on that. Is it, is it the crowns? Is it uh, status? Is it? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm still working on this because I do know he says in Revelation he's coming. His reward will be with him. So I, I don't know what that is. Uh, I believe it's going to be incredible. And I believe it's going to be important. I, I really do. And somebody said, I just want to get to heaven. Just get on in the streets of gold. Woo, just, woo, me and Jesus are going to fish in the river. You know, woo, woo. I don't know. I think there's more to it. Okay, And we're going to be evaluated by what I did with what God gave me. Okay, To be judged means to be evaluated on my performance as a Christian, not so I can be labeled by God as a Christian. That happened when you and I put our faith in Him. His finished work on the cross, when He said, it is finished, that meant... It is enough. Done. If you're a parent, any parents in here? I think, I think they put that clock on fast forward. If you're a parent that uh, if you got more than one child or you had maybe more than one sibling, you'll probably get this, okay? I'm the parent of two imperfect daughters. Uh, who have made their share of mistakes? Who have got things by me and didn't get caught? Who? I did catch them. Right? Uh, they have both disobeyed mine and their mom's rules. But never in their mind, nor in my mind, did the thought ever arise did my disobedience just change my standing with my father? Never, but it did come with some backlash. For instance, when they would get into a fight, and if you've never had two girls, you say, oh, they wouldn't fight. If they're close in age and they wear the same size clothes, get ready. It's on. Because one of them's going to wear the other one's clothes, and the other one don't take care of the clothes like the other one, and that was like mine. One took care of their clothes, and one didn't. Right? Uh, I have told Whitney, who is my oldest, who did take care of her stuff. <laughs> you, you're held more accountable for these actions. Why? She's five, you're eight. Okay? You have more maturity, and you've had many more lectures from your parents, and you know more. She has more ignorance than you right now. I, I remember when, when Brooklyn was a year and a half old, we noticed on our baseboards the name Brooklyn was wrote in Sharpie. <laughs> and my first thing was, Get Brooklyn in here! And then it hit me. She's a year and a half. She don't know how to write her name. <laughs> Angie, did you write this? No, then there's either the dog or Whitney. Whitney did. Whitney wrote it. She wanted Brooklyn in trouble. And she wrote that name there. And it backfired because you're old enough to know better. Okay? You have more maturity, 
you have more knowledge. And it's not an issue of do I love you, or it's not an issue of is your place in our home now not secure for you. No. I'm not condemning you for your actions, right? I'm evaluating you for what you're doing with what you know not to do or what you know to do. She's not cleaning her room. She's too. But you know, come on, do you understand what James is trying to drive home here? You know, right? You know, you're a teacher. You get this. You, hey, you're going to be evaluated by what you know. He that knows to do good and doesn't do it to him, it is sin. What does that mean? I think we're at all different levels in our journey in here. There's people who know. Somebody said, I just need the word every day. Listen, 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 listen. You do. You do. I, I need church every day. You don't. Because what happens is if, if, if we could just live out what we've been taught in James, it, it, it would take us forever. I'm out of time. James is just bringing back a point. I will stop here. In the book of Luke, verse 12, I want you to digest this. In verse 48. To whom much is given, much is required. That's all he's, that's what he's talking about. Some of you don't have the knowledge that I have in Scripture of what God... You might can be thankful for that. You need to grow in the knowledge and the grace of Jesus Christ. But I will be... I, God, and to much is given doesn't just mean a raise. It does. Or a gift. Or a talent. It does. If you're gifted in a talent and you're setting your butt on it right now, you, one day you're going to stand before God. He's going to go... Hey, you get heaven, but guess what? I gifted you and talented you, and you sat on it. You buried it. You buried it. I gave it. I required you to use it. You didn't. You didn't. But I also think it means knowledge. It's, it's your Whitney in Brooklyn. Right? She's two. You're five. She didn't clean her room. She doesn't know all that yet, nor are the Jew at two. But you, on the other hand, can't look at her. You have to look at you, right? And I, I'm, I'm evaluating you on what you know. And he's going to do that with us. He is. What did you do with it? And that's why I say, hey, brothers, don't everybody desire to be a teacher. Okay, number one, if you don't have the gift, don't worry about it. But you should still study the word and feed you because if you, if you don't know the word, you don't know Jesus because this is his biography. Hello. But when you desire to be a teacher, it means I verbalized I to you. And guess what? That means, you know what? He said don't honk at people. But I looking in my rearview mirror, that's him because he's real close to my bumper and I can see clearly. <laughs> Chicky. Facebook. Right. Had a guy one time when I used to have time to fish. I had three boats in three years. Used a combination of them twice. Just got rid of the last one. It was, the guy said, don't cry. He's pulling out. He said, don't cry. When he's pulling out, I said, don't worry, I won't. Anyway. <laughs> I was fishing one time, and it was at, used to be Gulf, Gulf States Canal, and I'm over time, and I know they're looking at me hard. I can feel it on my back. I feel my back heating up. But we were, there was a cable you were not supposed to go under, and I had a guy with me, and we were trying to catch redfish. Well, here come a guy I knew, went under the cable, went up in there, and was slaughtering them. 
I mean, slaughtering, like one after another, and we couldn't catch a crab. I, and the guy's with me goes, dude, I will pay the fine. Because it's plain. I mean, don't go past this. Danger, you will be arrested. Cameras. I will pay the fine, I said. Let me tell you how this is going to go down. You may pay the fine. I'm going to make Channel 6, Channel 4, Channel 12, and probably Fox. <laughs> probably Fox over a redfish. I said, there's a different way. Because they were catching them so fast, they run out of bait. We had a lot of bait. And they come back through and say, we're out of bait, man, and we're killing them. I said, I'll make you a deal. What? I said, I'll trade you some bait for six redfish, because there was two in the boat and there was three. And they said, seriously, I said, I had some pretty finger mullet. We made a trade that day. I didn't go to jail. I didn't go against what I taught to, to obey the law, right? I, I, not to say George didn't want to. Not to say as fast as they're catching them, we can fly up in there and I can outrun his boat. That means he'll get caught. <laughs> but I didn't. You know why? It'd have been a lot worse than a fine on me. Right? This is what he's talking about. Let's stand. I got to quit. <clears throat> what a pleasure it is to serve you, Jesus to be a part of your family, to be recipients of your grace. Everyone in here, you have given us a measure of faith. You have given us gifts and talents. You have blessed us with, with things, with stuff. You have blessed us with knowledge. Lord, we don't need, we don't need to set on that. and We don't need to put a bushel over that. and We don't need to hide it. Lord, we need to use it for your glory. That's what you gave it to us for. That's what you gave it to us for. And one day I will stand before you. Not, not, not to go to part from me. You will, no, no. That's, that, we have already decided that as Christians. That, that part's been decided. But I will stand before you. And you will look at what I built on the, on the foundation of Christ. Did it have eternal value or was it just for the now? Right? I want that reward, whatever it is. Right? But Lord, I want to be pleasing to you. I want to be pleasing to you. The one who loved me when I was unlovable. The one who died for me when I should have been on that cross but was not worthy. I should have been on one of the sides of him. But you took my place. You paid my debt. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for all of us in here today that we'd evaluate ourselves and go, you know what? Am I doing everything for him that he's given me? Or am I not? That's all it is. I want to be a kingdom builder. I want to be a kingdom builder. I want to do something for your kingdom. I want to see people experience what I've experienced. And it only comes through giving what I've got. Let us do that today without fear. It's in Jesus' name I pray.